Bitcoin has become a popular mainstream investment, but it's also known for its volatility. You don't know if in a week's time the value will be 20% lower, 10% lower, 10% higher. Its value fluctuates so much that few people would use it to buy everyday goods, such as shampoo or a plane ticket. Some crypto entrepreneurs say there's one way to change that, stablecoins. Die, this is a really interesting one. USD coin or USDC. Stablecoins are different from other cryptocurrencies and that they are pegged to assets like the US dollar or gold, which is meant to make them more stable. They've grown particularly popular among traders online. In just a year, as Bitcoin hit new records, the market value of stablecoins has grown tenfold. Facebook has announced plans to launch its own stablecoin, and Visa said it would create a stablecoin credit card. But a probe of one stablecoin exposed some potential risks with this system. It's Tether. The New York Attorney General had accused Tether, the most popular stablecoin, of lying about the cash reserves it uses to guarantee its dollar peg. Tether did not deny nor admit wrongdoing as part of a 2019 settlement, but agreed to release quarterly statements detailing its reserves. So can stablecoins accelerate the adoption of cryptocurrencies in our daily lives, and will they change the way we pay for goods? According to its creators, Bitcoin was meant to allow direct payments without ever going through banks. But so far, it's been accepted by few companies, with very few high-profile exceptions like Tesla. Market analysts found that Bitcoin's price has at times jumped or crashed by as much as $6,000 in a day. But that hasn't been the case for stablecoins. In the past year, the value of top stablecoins has fluctuated by as much as $0.04 cents to their $1 pegs. You can have reasonable assurance that in you know, three months' time or six months' time or one week's time, it'll still be worth $100. And that's what was missing in crypto before stablecoins came along. Alex Kern is an analyst who researches stablecoins and other cryptocurrencies. He says the first stablecoins were created as early as 2014. The 24-hour uh, trading volume is often over 90 billion. Bitcoin is a little over 50 billion. So it trades more often than Bitcoin. Tether was pegged to the U.S. dollar, and more than 200 other stablecoins followed. Some pegged to the euro or to the Korean won, others to commodities like gold, silver, or oil, or a combination of different assets. On top of stability, stablecoins like Tether have another key advantage, speed. Because this is digital money, transactions go through in a matter of seconds, faster than the three days it usually takes to wire U.S. dollars or euros using traditional banks. Stable coins are also faster than Bitcoin because the payments are centralized and managed by the company that created them. For example, Tether transactions are managed by the Tether platform, while Bitcoin payments are processed by a vast decentralized network of people called miners who are spread out all over the world. It's instantaneous. There's no settlement process that needs to occur. Only a handful of e-commerce websites accept stable coins at the moment. But crypto traders have quickly adopted stablecoins like Tether to buy and sell cryptocurrencies online. That's because stablecoins don't run on normal banking hours. Compared to stocks that have to be traded in locations like New York or Hong Kong during specific hours, cryptocurrencies are traded 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all across the globe. Plus, academics who study the role of cryptocurrencies say some banks have been wary to interact with crypto exchanges due to the lack of oversight in the industry and concerns that they could be exposed to illicit activities like laundering money or funding terrorism. Binance, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, said it is committed to creating a compliant, safe, and reliable trading environment, and it asks users to follow all local laws on money laundering and counterterrorism financing. In 2019, the New York Attorney General accused the companies managing the stablecoin Tether, also called USDT, of making false statements to investors about the cash reserves of its currency, an essential component of what makes it stable and secure for investors. The crypto community online discussed the probe and Tether's dollar backing. If you go to their website right here, it says every Tether is always 100% backed by our reserves. Which sounds very much as if one US dollar went in, 
and a tether was printed in return. It's so simple. The investigation found that in 2017 and 2018, Bitfinex, a cryptocurrency exchange that has common ownership with the company that controls Tether, relied on a third-party company named Crypto Capital Corporation to handle deposits and withdrawals on Bitfinex's trading platform. The New York Attorney General's office said that Crypto Capital Corporation failed to process some of these orders and Bitfinex lost access to $850 million of its customers' money. Crypto Capital said it couldn't process Bitfinex transactions because in 2018, its bank accounts in the U.S., Poland, Portugal, and the United Kingdom were frozen without justification. Naturally, this significantly delayed fiat withdrawals from Bitfinex for its users, which started to suspect something was up. The New York Attorney General's office said Bitfinex tapped into Tether's dollar reserves to cover up the losses and afterwards lied to its customers when it said its currency was fully backed by U.S. dollars at all times. During the course of the New York Attorney General's investigation, Tether said it held 74% of the necessary reserves, which some investors considered to be enough to make the digital currency secure. This is perfectly common in modern banking in which only a fraction of bank deposits are backed by actual cash on hand. As part of a settlement with the New York Attorney General's office, Bifinex and Tether Limited paid $18.5 million in penalties and stopped trading activity with New Yorkers. This is finally coming to an end. Bifinex and Tether said the amount of money they agreed to pay should be viewed as a measure of their desire to put the matter behind them. The firms did not admit or deny any wrongdoing. Industry insiders say this investigation should be a warning to all companies that created stablecoins and to expect the stablecoin industry to be more tightly regulated in the coming years. Some companies are already looking towards a future of using reliable virtual money as payments. Visa announced a stablecoin-based credit card and said that making its digital currency strategy secure, private, and trusted is a key priority. Facebook's new cryptocurrency project, DM, aims to create stablecoins pegged to different fiat currencies. DM says the system is being built with security in mind. Some countries are also working on what financial analysts call the next iteration of stablecoins, which would be a digital currency pegged to the national currency and controlled by central banks. But before this type of digital money truly goes mainstream, Kern says its creators and issuers are going to have to convince regulators and users that their technology will keep their money safe. It's going to be very important for people to trust the entity that's issuing the stablecoin. And the one that has the most trust of people over a period of time will be the one that becomes the most heavily used.